What was that? An exhibition? We need emotional content. In the annals of history, one name blazes like a meteor, a name that transcended mere mortal boundaries and ignited a revolution in martial arts and entertainment. But as the world watched his meteoric rise to fame, little did they know that this trailblazing legend's journey would be cut tragically short. Today, we venture into the enigmatic world of Bruce Lee, uncovering the triumphs, unraveling the mysteries, and delving into the chilling theories that shroud his untimely demise. Background and Early Life On a crisp November 27 in the year 1940, within the confines of San Francisco's Chinese hospital, a star was born, Li Junfun, renowned across the globe as Bruce Lee. A true fusion of cultures, he emerged from the union of two worlds. His father, Li Hoi Chuin, a luminary of the Cantonese opera stage, brought one facet, while his mother, Grace Ho, hailed from an opulent Hong Kong dynasty, contributing the other. Though his roots sprouted in the soil of the United States, it was in the vibrant embrace of Hong Kong that he truly blossomed. The seeds of performance and amusement, sown in the garden of his father's profession, germinated his fascination with the art of acting from a tender age. As a fledgling, Bruce Lee graced the silver screen in unassuming roles, unwittingly laying the cornerstone for his forthcoming stardom. Yet, as fate spun its threads, a pivotal juncture emerged. Imagine the teenage Bruce Lee, enmeshed in the throes of street skirmishes, a tempestuous phase that would become transformative. Within this crucible of chaos, he unearthed a hidden jewel, his ardor for the martial arts. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, his parents, driven by concern for his well-being, steered him towards martial training, a monumental choice that would launch Bruce Lee onto an uncharted trajectory. This decision acted as the ignition for his lifelong sojourn through the realm of martial arts. His first steps led him into the sanctuary of Yip Man's tutelage, a grand master of Wing Chun. The Unconventional Journey of Lee's Martial Arts Passion Lee's fascination with martial arts wasn't just a hobby, it consumed his thoughts and energy. He delved into various styles like Tai Chi boxing and fencing, giving him a taste of different ways to fight. This mix of experiences shaped how he thought about battles, making him question the strict rules and old-fashioned customs that ruled martial arts during that time. In 1959, after an intense clash with the son of a powerful triad family, Lee's parents got worried about potential revenge. So they sent him packing to the United States. He landed in San Francisco for a while, but it wasn't long before he found his true home in Seattle. High school wrapped up, and he decided to dive into philosophy at the University of Washington. While wandering Seattle's streets, Lee didn't just fill his mind with deep thoughts. He began to teach martial arts, but he didn't teach the usual stuff. He shared his own mix of styles that flipped the script on the usual rules. His new approach got him noticed. Students flocked to him. That's how his first martial arts school, the Lee Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute, came to life. In Seattle, amidst the rainy days, he met Linda Emery. You can guess the rest. Love blossomed, they got married, and they welcomed two kids, Brandon and Shannon Lee. In the early chapters of his life story, Bruce Lee stood at a crossroads, a point where different parts of his life came together like ingredients in a pot. He was a mix of various cultures, experiences, and ways of thinking, all merging within him. Picture a young man, driven by an intense desire to smash through barriers and reshape what everyone considered normal. He was like a trailblazer ahead of his time, a preview of the worldwide legend he was about to become. His beginnings were like a recipe with a dash of challenges, a spoonful of passion, and a heaping cup of ambition. These ingredients blended to create the base for all his future accomplishments. This blend of difficulties, determination, and dreams also added to the mystery that shrouded his life and the questions that lingered even after he was gone. Rise to Fame Bruce Lee's journey from being a teacher of martial arts in Seattle to becoming a famous figure around the world is a story of never giving up, coming up with new ideas and working really hard. 
He didn't become well-known quickly. His success happened because he kept trying and didn't give up on what he believed in. Back in the early 1960s, Bruce set up another martial arts school in Oakland, California. What made him different was the way he taught martial arts. Instead of sticking to strict styles, he believed in being flexible and attractive to people. This was really new and exciting, so lots of students wanted to learn from him. Around this time, he also made his own martial arts philosophy called Jeet Kune Do, which means the way of the intercepting fist. But the moment that really made Bruce famous was in 1964. He showed off his amazing skills at a big karate event in Long Beach. People in Hollywood noticed him because he was not only really good at martial arts, but he also had a special charm. They could see he had the potential to be a star, both because of his personality and his martial arts talent. From the Green Hornet to Hong Kong legend. Back in 1966, Lee found himself cast in a show called The Green Hornet. He played Kato, the skilled sidekick known for his martial arts prowess. Despite the show's brief run, Lee's portrayal of Kato caught the attention of many. It was like a spark that lit up the popularity of his character, especially in Hong Kong. People there affectionately called it the Kato Show. This was a pivotal moment for Lee, as it marked his breakthrough in the American entertainment scene. It was like a stepping stone that paved the way for his future success. But even with this newfound fame, Lee faced challenges. For actors of Asian descent in Hollywood, opportunities were scarce and often cliched. This left Lee feeling frustrated. So in 1971, he made a decision. He returned to Hong Kong, not knowing the massive fame awaiting him. As he set foot back in Hong Kong, something extraordinary happened. The Green Hornet's success had created a wave of popularity for Lee. Seizing this opportunity, a film producer named Raymond Chow extended a movie contract to him. Lee saw this as a turning point and accepted the offer. This marked the start of a powerful collaboration that would change martial arts films forever. Though his career spanned only five short years, Bruce Lee's impact on martial arts and movies was immense. It wasn't just about box office records or global fame, it went deeper. He broke down racial barriers and questioned traditional views on martial arts. His dedication and passion became a guiding light for millions. Bruce Lee's International Success Bruce Lee's incredible journey to becoming a worldwide star was highlighted by his unforgettable performances in groundbreaking movies and his unwavering dedication to martial arts. His global triumph was not just because of his charm and skill, but also due to his innovative way of approaching martial arts and filmmaking. His breakthrough movie, The Big Boss, released in 1971, propelled him to unparalleled fame in Hong Kong. But the movie's success was not limited to just his hometown. It captured the attention of the world, shattering records in countries like the United Kingdom and South Korea. This film also marked the birth of a new cinematic genre martial arts films, blending intense fight scenes with captivating storytelling. Fists of Fury Lee's second movie, Fists of Fury in 1972, made him even more famous all over the world. This film did even better than his first one, The Big Boss, and broke records at the box office. This made everyone see him as the top star in martial arts movies. People in Asia, Europe, and America loved watching him on the screen. They were really interested in his characters and amazing fighting abilities. After that, in 1972, Lee made his third film called Way of the Dragon. This was a big project where he did many jobs. He was the boss in charge, the director, the writer, the star, and the person who planned out all the fight scenes. He showed how good he was at all parts of making a movie. This film was even more successful than his first two. People and experts praised Lee for how well he directed the film. It was clear that he had a bright future ahead in the movie business. Enter the Dragon In 1973, Bruce Lee's fourth and final completed film was Enter the Dragon. This movie marked the peak of his career. It was a collaboration between Warner Brothers, Hollywood, and Golden Harvest in Hong Kong. This film was groundbreaking and showed how much people around the world loved Bruce Lee. It was both a commercial and critical success. 
many people think it's the best martial arts film ever. Enter the Dragon wasn't just a regular movie. It was a special one that introduced Bruce Lee's ideas and his own way of doing martial arts to the whole world. It was like a dream coming true for him. He wanted to bring people from different parts of the world together through his work, and this movie did just that. After Bruce Lee passed away, the movie was released. It became a way to honor his memory and keep his influence alive. Even though he was gone, his fame didn't fade. Bruce Lee became famous everywhere, not just in one place. He changed how people saw martial arts and movies forever. His thoughts and teachings still motivate martial artists and fans from all over. The movies he made, where he showed his incredible skills and ideas, are still watched by millions of people who love his work. Bruce Lee wasn't only a movie star, he was something bigger, a cultural phenomenon. He wasn't limited by borders or time. The success he found around the world is proof of how important he still is. He left behind a legacy that continues to touch people even now. The Extraordinary Saga of Bruce Lee's Final Hours On an ordinary summer day in Hong Kong, July 20, 1973, the stage was set for a series of extraordinary events that would shape the fate of a global icon. The man in focus was none other than Bruce Lee, a martial arts maverick who had shattered the conventions of traditional combat and burst onto the silver screen, captivating audiences worldwide. Little did he know that this would be his final day, a day that would etch his legacy even deeper into the annals of history. As the sun's rays painted the city, Bruce Lee, the master who had embraced both martial arts and cinema, greeted the morning with the unknowing ignorance of the impending tragedy. He woke up, his mind brimming with plans, unaware that fate had other designs for him. His routine for the day seemed ordinary, a meeting with Raymond Chow, a friend and business partner whose influence in the Hong Kong film industry was formidable. Chow, a co-founder of Golden Harvest, a cinematic powerhouse, and Lee were set to discuss their upcoming brainchild, Game of Death. This project was a canvas where Lee was not just the star, but also the director and the scriptwriter, an embodiment of his multifaceted talent. The meeting with Chow was productive, ideas flowing like water. Post-discussion, they embarked on a journey to meet Taiwanese actress Betty Ting, a rising star who had earned her place in Lee's upcoming cinematic fabric. Their destination was her apartment, a place where creativity and camaraderie thrived. The purpose was simple, a dinner meeting to align their visions. But this setting would unwittingly become the backdrop for the unfolding tragedy. Within the walls of Betty's apartment, amidst the whispers of future scenes and character nuances, a shadow crept over Lee's vitality. He voiced an unusual complaint, a throbbing headache. For a man known for his physical prowess, this was an unexpected aberration. Betty, concerned by his discomfort, offered a painkiller called Equidistic, a blend of aspirin and a tranquilizer called Metrobamate. Lee, seeking relief, decided to rest in one of the bedrooms, little realizing that this innocuous decision was the catalyst for the impending turmoil. The subsequent hours were a blur of ominous swiftness. Lee's health took an abrupt nosedive, spiraling into a medical crisis that propelled him into a deep coma. The same man who had defied the limitations of human potential now lay incapacitated, the warrior's spirit ensnared by an invisible adversary. It was as if destiny had swung a cruel twist. It marked not only the end of a day, but also the tragic conclusion of an era. The Battle to Save Bruce Lee's Vibrant Spirit As the sun dipped below the horizon on that fateful evening of July 20, 1973, a profound sense of gravity settled upon the atmosphere. Within the confines of Betty Ting Pei's apartment, the passage of time seemed to slow as each minute ticked away. Bruce Lee, the embodiment of vibrant energy and prowess, lay motionless, his once dynamic presence now confined to the realm of stillness. The clock hands pointed resolutely, marking the moment when Bruce's vitality was abruptly hushed, replaced by an unsettling and eerie tranquility that hung in the air. The very essence that radiated from him, the force that captivated audiences and opponents alike, had been inexplicably muted. 
As the minutes marched on, Bruce's condition began to deteriorate, casting a shadow of concern upon those present. Raymond Chow, a friend and confidant, was summoned in desperation. Racing against time, he crossed the threshold into Betty's apartment, only to be met with a sight that sent shockwaves through his being. There lay Bruce Lee, a paragon of physical fitness, now lying in a state of unconsciousness that defied comprehension. The stark contrast between Bruce's usual vibrant persona and his current stillness was nothing short of jarring. A man known for his dynamism, who had breathed life into martial arts like never before, now rested in a silent realm. This incongruity was enough to spark panic, propelling Chow to take swift action. The call for a doctor reverberated through the tense air. As the doctor's arrival loomed, Bruce's body began to manifest distressing symptoms. His once smooth skin now bore irregular splotches, his face showing signs of swelling. When the doctor crossed the threshold, the scene that unfolded before his eyes was nothing short of harrowing. Bruce Lee, the martial arts maestro, lay ensnared in unconsciousness, his condition growing graver by the moment. In the midst of this dire tableau, the doctor's urgency became palpable. It was a race against time, a battle against an unseen foe. The doctor's words resonated with an unspoken dread as he implored Chow to take immediate action. And so, the decision was made. Bruce Lee, now a fragile vessel of vitality, was swiftly transported to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Hong Kong, the urgency of the situation casting a surreal aura over the night. Within the hospital's sterile corridors, a team of medical professionals, led by the capable hands of Dr. Peter Wu, rallied to breathe life back into the fallen star. Their efforts were a symphony of urgency and expertise, each maneuver a note in the composition to revive an unconscious icon. Yet despite their unyielding determination, their battle against the tides of fate proved futile. As the hands of time continued their relentless journey, the clock struck 11.30 p.m. on July 20, 1973. In that somber moment, Bruce Lee's journey came to an untimely end. The man who had single-handedly redefined martial arts in the realm of cinema, who had become an emblem of dynamism and innovation, had been taken from the world at the mere age of 32. The news spread like wildfire, igniting shockwaves that traversed continents. The abruptness of his departure, coupled with his youthful vigor and exceptional health, created a chasm of disbelief. The world was left grappling with the void left by Bruce Lee's passing, a void that no passage of time could ever truly fill. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Within this portrayal, one observes Bruce Lee reclined within a funeral casket, meticulously arranged for interment. But something puzzling grabs our attention. There are marks on his face that look like bruises. This suggests a theory. Maybe Bruce's death wasn't peaceful, Maybe it was rough and violent. This image raises important questions. Can it be true that the strong and skilled Bruce Lee suffered a brutal end? The marks on his face make us wonder. Did his commitment to his art lead to his tragedy? Or is there a darker story behind his death? As we look at this unsettling picture, we're drawn into a mystery. Time has hidden some facts, but our curiosity keeps Bruce Lee's memory alive. We're determined to uncover the truth behind this enigma that surrounds his final moments. We'd like to know your opinion on what we just showed you. Seeking clarity in the riddle of Bruce Lee's passing. The reason behind his coma and eventual passing remained an enigmatic and heart-wrenching puzzle. The whole situation was as bewildering as it was devastating. When the initial autopsy report was conducted, it offered only a handful of clues leaving a cloud of uncertainty hanging in the air. The medical examiner, a knowledgeable individual well-versed in deciphering the secrets held within the human body, explained that the root cause of his passing was attributed to a cerebral edema. This condition, much like an unexpected and overwhelming influx of water, led to an abnormal accumulation of fluid within his brain. The result was an acute and severe swelling, casting a shadow of confusion over the medical experts. The profound question that echoed through the corridors of the medical community was, how could a man who seemed to be at the pinnacle of his physical health 
devoid of any previous medical ailments, suddenly fall victim to such a dire cerebral edema. It was a riddle that seemed to have no easy answer. As the medical investigation delved deeper, the confusion intensified. Not a trace of any harmful substances could be detected within Lee's body, further confounding the medical team. It was as if the enigma had grown even more intricate, the pieces of the puzzle refusing to fit together. When the final autopsy report emerged, it labeled the cause of death as a misadventure. This conclusion, though far from satisfying, painted a picture of unfortunate circumstances that led to an untimely demise. But the conclusion felt insufficient, a mere placeholder for the multitude of questions that remained unanswered. The shroud of mystery seemed to tighten, leaving those who sought clarity in a state of profound wonderment. As news of Bruce Lee's passing spread like wildfire, the entire globe grappled with the shattering loss of a true icon. Fans, friends, and family found themselves not only deeply saddened, but also bewildered, struggling to piece together the puzzling sequence of events that led to his untimely departure. The circumstances surrounding his sudden coma, which ultimately led to his demise, remained an enigmatic puzzle that provoked a deluge of wild speculation and fervent conjecture. The mystery of what could have triggered such a catastrophic chain of events was utterly perplexing. At the heart of the investigation was the administration of equidistic, a seemingly innocuous pill given to Lee by Betty Ting, a name that would soon become synonymous with this tragedy. Could a mere headache pill truly have unleashed such a devastating reaction? As people sought to make sense of this profound loss, every aspect of Lee's life was meticulously examined in the pursuit of answers. Questions arose about his diet, his relentless and vigorous exercise routine, and even the possibility of hidden allergies. It was as if the world collectively held its breath, yearning for the missing pieces that could complete the intricate jigsaw puzzle of Lee's unexpected coma. Despite the dedicated efforts of medical experts, the event that led to Bruce Lee's coma and eventual passing continued to defy rational explanation. The lack of a definitive answer left a void that was quickly filled by a cacophony of conjectures and theories, some grounded in reason, while others teetered on the brink of the fantastical. The poignant departure of this martial arts luminary continues to baffle and haunt his ardent followers, speculations, and theories. The abrupt and enigmatic passing of Bruce Lee emerged like a shadowy enigma, setting the stage for an influx of theories vying to unravel the enigma behind his premature departure. The absence of a clear-cut cause and the peculiar circumstances enveloping his final moments only served to intensify the fervor of conjecture. Among the initial hypotheses, one spotlighted the presence of the painkiller equidistic that had found its way into Lee's system on his fateful day. Though this medication was a familiar entity, and generally benign for most, Whispers of possibility gained traction that Lee's body might have unleashed an exaggerated response to one of its intricate constituents. Could it be that the revered martial virtuoso had, in an ironic twist, fallen victim to an unwelcome reaction triggered by the very remedy he sought? The proposition, though not far-fetched, remained a conundrum, tethered to uncertainty due to the scarcity of definitive medical substantiation. The notion dangled tantalizingly, leaving the world to ponder whether an unforeseen allergy or an adverse drug interplay might have scripted the final act in Bruce Lee's extraordinary life. From dehydration to forbidden romance. Diving into the realm of speculations surrounding Bruce Lee's enigmatic life, further intriguing theories emerge, shedding light on his rigorous workout routine and his puzzling aversion to quenching his thirst during training sessions. Some minds proposed a daring hypothesis, that the intense physical strain he imposed upon himself, combined with insufficient hydration, might have paved the way for a potential heat stroke. This, in turn, could have triggered a cerebral edema, a condition where excess fluid accumulates in the brain. However, even this theory, while capturing the imagination, falls short of being an indisputable explanation. The reasoning behind this uncertainty lies within the paradox of Lee's extraordinary levels of fitness and his unparalleled mastery of human physiology. 
His profound understanding of the intricacies of the body seemed almost contradictory to the notion of him succumbing to such a preventable mishap. Yet the plot thickens with an even more contentious notion, weaving a narrative that implicates the actress Betty Ting Pei in Bruce Lee's untimely demise. In this provocative narrative, she is painted as the mysterious figure who not only supplied Lee with the equidesic substance, but also discovered him in an unresponsive state. The air of suspicion around her involvement was inevitable, given the circumstances. Fueling the intrigue was their alleged affair, injecting an element of forbidden romance into the narrative's veins. However, one must tread carefully through the allure of sensationalism. While the theory tantalizingly infers a clandestine connection between the two, it stands on shaky ground due to the lack of concrete evidence. The allure of an illicit liaison weaving into the threads of tragedy is undeniable, but reality often proves resistant to the allure of fictionalization. Family Curse Theory This theory, shrouded in an aura of an alleged family curse, has woven its tendrils deep into the fabric of contemplation. The essence of curses finds its roots entwined with the rich tapestry of Chinese traditions, and the flames of this belief were stoked by the tragically premature departure of Lee's own son, Brandon Lee. Much like the pages of an ancient saga, the story unfolds with a touch of eerie coincidence. Brandon, just as his father before him, met an untimely fate while still in the bloom of youth. The year was 1993, a time when the world was a stage for his cinematic endeavors. However, fate seemed to have its own script, as Brandon's life took an unexpected turn amidst the hustle and bustle of filming The Crow. It was as if the threads of destiny wove themselves into an intricate pattern of mystery and peculiarity. But let us not be swept away only by the whispers of curses, for reality often hides between the lines of these stories. The whispers fail to capture the full picture, for they seem to overlook the chapters where Lee's own kin carved their destinies with the chisel of longevity. Indeed, his siblings and his daughter, Shannon Lee, have treaded the path of life with grace and endurance. Their tales, vibrant with health and longevity, stand as a challenge to the very concept of a looming family curse. The Theory Organized Crime The realm of conspiracy theories delved into the realm of organized crime. Back in the 1970s, Hong Kong simmered with triad activities, a network of secret criminal societies. Even the glitzy film industry couldn't escape their shadow. Whispers spread like wildfire that Bruce Lee, the iconic figure, had crossed paths with the triads when he resisted paying them protection money. Some even spun tales that they might have stealthily used poison to halt his extraordinary life. The stories swirling around Bruce Lee's untimely demise spanned a vast spectrum, stretching from believable medical explanations to wildly imaginative fantasies. Each idea had its group of believers and skeptics, yet none could decisively unveil the truth behind the curtain shrouding his death. What remained clear was that Bruce Lee, the man who had entranced the globe with his mastery of martial arts and groundbreaking performances on screen, had etched an unforgettable legacy. His exit from this world matched the enigma of his presence, abrupt and bewildering. The pursuit of answers, much like a captivating mystery, held his admirers, scholars, and those obsessed with unraveling secrets transfixed and curious. Bruce Lee's Undying Impact Bruce Lee's influence lives on, even though he left us too soon. He's not just a martial artist and a global movie star. He's a symbol that impacts and motivates countless people all over the world. His movies, especially Enter the Dragon, changed how we see martial arts in films. With his special way of fighting and his captivating presence, he transformed martial arts movies completely. His creative moves and his idea of adapting and being practical changed action films and martial arts forever. But Bruce Lee's impact isn't only on the screen. He made a huge difference in martial arts itself. His creation, Jeet Kune Do, a way of thinking about martial arts that focuses on being useful, flexible, and simple, was very different from the old methods. He cared more about how each person expressed themselves than following strict rules. Even now, 
his ideas affect martial arts all around the world. Lee's impact stretched into the world of fitness. His own workout routine and fitness philosophy inspired many to view exercise as more than just a goal, but as a lifestyle. His strong physique and his belief in the link between physical health and mental well-being still shape fitness lovers and athletes. Above all, Bruce Lee symbolized shattering barriers. He was among the first Asian actors to attain mainstream success in Hollywood. He challenged racial assumptions, opening doors for future Asian actors in the Western entertainment scene. His struggle and triumph motivate today's Asian actors and filmmakers. Bruce Lee's legacy endures in numerous ways. People still study his teachings, and his movies captivate new generations. Statues, museums, documentaries, and biographies pay homage to his life and beliefs. His daughter, Shannon Lee, carries on his legacy via the Bruce Lee Foundation, which aims to preserve, continue, and spread his life lessons. As we delve into Bruce Lee's life and legacy, we remember not only his exceptional talents and accomplishments, but also his unbeatable spirit, ceaseless pursuit of excellence, and unwavering faith in self-expression. In his famous words, he said the path to immortality lies in living a life worth remembering. Bruce Lee's life is undoubtedly one worth remembering. Do you think Bruce Lee's untimely death was a tragic accident? Or do you lean towards the various conspiracy theories suggesting foul play? Share your thoughts in the comments below 